This is the second video in our series on scuba diving gear maintenance, and this week we're focused on fins. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on and welcome to Divers Ready, my name's James. It is so great to see all of you back for the second in this series on scuba diving gear maintenance. Basically, we're teaching you how to take the best care of the equipment that you've invested in. And I want to say right at the start, thank you so much to Dive Right, the sponsor for this series of videos. Uh, they've been kind enough to give us a whole selection of dive gear. You'll know if you watch the first video that that giveaway is still going on right now for the ES-155 mask. This week, because it's fins, we're going to be giving away a pair of Dive Right XT monoprene fins. If you want to win these super light, super sturdy, really over-engineered fins, you know what to do, guys. There's a link in the description of this video below, so you can go and check out that contest right now. But what we're going to do is show you the best way to take care of your fins because fins aren't cheap these days. You know, you're going to be paying between $100 and $200 for a decent pair of fins. And I want to make sure that you're protecting your investment and you're getting as much of a long life out of your equipment as possible. Fins seemingly a very simple piece of kit, but there are definitely maintenance considerations. And we're going to run through those right now. Tip number one is the foot pocket inserts. Now, when you buy a new pair of fins, you're gonna find these folded pieces of plastic inside the foot pocket of each fin. And often people mistake these for part of the packaging material and they get thrown in the bin. Don't do that. Keep them, reuse them, especially if you're storing your fins because it's gonna be a while until the next time you can splash. Put the foot pocket inserts back in and it's just gonna help the foot pocket hold its shape. It's gonna stop it from getting crushed and twisted and out of shape and it's going to extend the life of your fins. Tip number two is always make sure you're rinsing the metal components. Often fins are overlooked because you think, oh, you know, it's mainly plastic, salt can't do it that much damage. Absolutely wrong. Nearly all fins on the market have some kind of metal component. It's normally the pin in the buckle or there's a spring on the strap release or in this case, the whole spring strap is made out of stainless steel. You're going to want to make sure that you flush that with fresh water after every immersion in salt. And the best way to do that is to hold the fin underwater and pull it and extend that spring and pump fresh water onto the inside there so that all the salt that builds up on the inside of that spring is dissolved and released in the fresh water. So I like to give that a really thorough rinse, particularly in those areas there. With these fins, they actually have a stainless steel bolt or screw that goes through them. I know that the uh, the strap itself actually angles to make them easier to put on and take off. So you're gonna to wanna to loosen those up every now and then, again, especially if you're gonna put it into storage. Take the pin out, make sure you wash that in fresh water and leave it to air dry before reassembling them. As for cleaning of the fin blades, if you wanna keep your fins looking nice and shiny and new and protecting the value that you've got in them, uh, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're cleaning the blades. I'm a big guy and for reasons I still don't fully understand, I enjoy cramming myself into tiny compartments inside of shipwrecks, engine rooms and the like, and my fins normally end the dive absolutely caked in rust. No problem at all to remove any kind of scrapes, scratches and rust marks from the fins. A little bit of warm water and some dish soap does the trick and they'll keep looking shiny and new for a long time. As for any fraying, sometimes on the rails of the fins or the fin tips themselves, if you're scraping it up in caverns or caves or inside of wrecks or just generally mistreating your fins in a swimming pool, particularly for instructors, uh, you're gonna to start to see that the plastic frays every time it gets a little bit of a, a tear on it. When I see my fins starting to fray a little bit and you start to see some plastic tearing off in little hairs, I just run a lighter over it and burn those little pieces off just to keep the edges nice and sharp and smooth. And then afterwards, you can just kind of run a cold, wet towel over it and keep the edges nice and sharp looking. I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's a really beautiful love triangle that we've got going on. I'm making this series of videos on gear maintenance, cram-packed full of hints and tips to help you guys protect your investment in the gear that you've made. You are then repaying me by going to support DiveRight and following them on their social channels. DiveRight likes that so much that they're willing to help me keep the lights on on this rather elaborate studio slash dive locker. 
So it's a beautiful arrangement. If you want it to continue, please, by all means, head to Diverite's social channels, all of which are linked in the description of this video below. Throw them a like, throw them a follow, let them know that you saw them on Divers Ready. It really helps me out to keep making these videos for you. So let's talk about preventative maintenance for fins themselves. Pretty much the only wear and tear item on a set of fins is the strap. These days, with nice sturdy stainless steel spring straps like this, that strap will pretty much last the lifetime of the fin as long as you fresh water rinse it. But if you're still rocking fins that have the old school rubber style straps, they are wear and tear items. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're inspecting those for any micro tears in the same way I was talking about with the mass strap last video in this series, making sure that when you jump into the water, that strap is gonna hold, it's not weak, it's not about to break, so that your fins don't come flying off and you actually lose the fins and then have to go and invest in more fins. So do check those out, they are wear and tear items. These days, with the spring straps, with the bungee straps, still wear and tear, but you've gotta check them every now and then, but they do last a hell of a lot longer. Also of note, most brands can supply you with a backup set of straps for the fins that you've invested in, and it is worth changing them out from time to time as part of your preventative maintenance cycle. I've saved the biggest tip to last, ladies and gentlemen, because the biggest mistake I see people making when handling their fins in terms of care and maintenance is how they're stored or packed if you're traveling. It's really important that you keep your fins nice and flat. If you're storing them for a long time, make sure they're horizontal on a shelf and don't stack stuff on top of it. What you don't want is to bend the fins and then store it in this position because sooner or later the monoprene, rubber, silicon or plastic is just gonna mold into that state and then all of a sudden you've got fins that look like elf shoes. It's not a good look. Same thing when you're traveling, when you're packing fins in your luggage, put them in first, put them in the bottom and make sure they lie nice and flat. Then put some soft materials, maybe your wetsuit, maybe your rash guard, swimwear and all that kind of stuff on top of them before stacking your BCD, your regulators and everything else so that the pressure and the weight on them is even. You don't wanna have these folded up in any way because it will damage the fin and also make them less effective in the water. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that the contest is now open to enter to win a pair of XT fins. These are fins for serious divers. These ones happen to be size large, but I will get you whatever size the winner so wishes. All the details for entering that competition are in the link in the description below. Thank you again to Dive Right. Don't forget, guys, you can help me out and help support my channel by supporting my sponsors. So please do go head over to Dive Right's Facebook, Dive Right's Instagram, subscribe to them on YouTube and show them your support and let them know that James from Divers Ready sent you. You know how it works by now. I'll put the rest of the videos in this series just over here somewhere. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you on the next one. Dive safe, dive often. Boo!